Hey, welcome to Mikey's RC. This is the first video in what I hope to be is a really short series on how to build this super fun plane. This is what I call the Sport Trainer. I named this plane a Sport Trainer because it uses ailerons and elevators to fly. Now a lot of trainers actually use the rudder and an elevator to fly, which is fine, but I think it's easier to learn on, and especially if you want to progress to more advanced planes later, if you actually learn to fly with a plane that has ailerons. All you got to do is bank the plane and pull back on the elevator to make a turn. It's that simple. This plane is easy to build and uses materials that are really easy to find, like foam board, barbecue skewers, and popsicle sticks. It's also easy to fly. If you're just getting into the hobby of flying, or if you want a plane that's just fun to fly and relaxing, this is the one. At a cost of about $10 per airframe, you can crash this thing all day long and not care about it. It's actually pretty durable materials too. But if you crash it and destroy it, $10 and about an hour's worth of work, and you got yourself another plane. In this video, I hope to cover how to print out the plans, trim the plans, how to cut out the fuselage, wings, and tail, cutting and hinging the control surfaces on the ailerons and elevator, and gluing the wings and tail on. Hey, I guess that's most of the plane. Well, there are a couple more steps after that, like mounting the motor and setting up the push rods, but that really doesn't take that long. So without further ado, let's stop yapping and get to building. The first thing you want to do is go to MikeyIsRC.com and find the page where we've got the free PDF downloads and download the plans for the Mikey's RC Sport Trainer. So there's 12 pages to the plans. They're going to look like this once they're all printed out. You've got the wing, top view of the plane, here's the fuselage, here's the list of build materials that we'll be going over a little bit later, there's the tail section, the uh, motor mount pieces, and here's also a nice 3D view which will help you put the plane together and show you where things go. And over here I've got pretty much all you need to put this plane together. Got hot glue, you can use 5 minute epoxy if you want but it does take longer. Uh, here are some popsicle sticks, we use those for a lot of different things on the plane. And some barbecue bamboo skewers. And here we have some 16 gauge galvanized stainless steel wire. Now this is a new thing I'm trying out. I'm using it for the push rods on the plane. Um, it has worked on one plane so far. Um, or you can also go to your hobby shop and get these, um, I think they call them piano wire or music wire. Um, and you can use those for your push rods as well. And then of course we've got our foam core. This is just a little piece here. It's about a quarter inch thick. And it's got uh, kind of like poster board on either side of basically Depron foam in the middle. And for the most part, you don't have to add a lot of extra carbon fiber tubes or anything to this stuff. It is pretty stiff. And it's pretty durable too. If you get into a crash, it tends to kind of keep its shape. Um, and if it doesn't, you just cut out the bad section. And last but not least, of course, we have a, a really nice sharp exacto hobby knife. And having a nice sharp blade is very important to making the cutting out of your plane easy. Now the reason I've chosen all these materials is because they're really cheap and for the most part can be found just about anywhere. Foam cores from your craft store, you can get this at your grocery store, get this stuff at your local hardware store, popsicle sticks at your local craft store, and of course hardware store, craft store, get your glue gun. I always try and make my planes very easy to build and use materials that are very cheap and accessible to everyone. The first thing you want to do when printing out the plans is to print out just this first page here and it is um, the left side of the wing and it's got a print scale on it so print this out Make sure that your printer is set to no page scaling, and that way it will print out to the proper scale. But you still want to check it, so print out the first page and measure this line here. If it measures exactly 5 inches, you're good to go and print out the rest of the plans. So the next step after you've printed out all the pages of the plans is to trim off all the sides. Any side of two pages that you have where they're going to be joining together, you're going to want to trim it off. Now right here you can see that we're going to cut off about that much. So all this stuff to the left of the ruler here, we're going to cut that off. Trimming off this excess is going to make it easy for putting your plans together and lining them up perfectly. So here we're going to trim off the excess on one of the pages. Just like that, trim it off right up to the red and the black lines. Once you've got the margins on all the different pages trimmed, go ahead and start taping them together with a little bit of scotch tape.
Now that you've got your plans all taped together, they should look something like this. You've got the fuselage, the tail or elevator, and then the wing. And those are the three main components to this plane. It's really simple. Now, when you're cutting out the main wing, of course you have the ailerons here. What I recommend is cutting out the outer edge first. Just cut all the way around the outside of the wing. We're going to transfer that shape onto our foam core. And then once you've done that major outline, then we're going to just cut up here and here and actually fold the aileron up. And that will enable us to do a nice trace on our foam core of where the aileron is and then of course we can trace along the folded up line right here to get the hinge line. Okay and here's what it's going to look like once you cut out all the pieces from the templates. Here's the fuselage, tail, here's the motor mount, there's actually three of these but of course you only need one template and the aileron servo straps you only need two of these and here's the wing. So the next thing we got to do is take all these shapes and our big old piece of foam core here. And we'll be taping them onto it. So now take your templates, lay them out on your foam core, tape them down with just a couple little pieces of tape maybe on each end, like here and here, just to keep them from sliding around. And then very carefully trace all the way around the edge for all the different pieces. Now one thing to keep in mind when you're cutting out the wing for this plane is it, it's actually preferred to have a little bit of what's called dihedral in the wing and so that's kind of like a V shape to it so if this is my really simple drawing of my plane here's my wing here's the bottom of it where the fuselage goes on and what this does is it actually gives the plane inherent stability so if you're in a bank turn it's going to naturally have a tendency to correct itself now foam core when you get these big sheets of foam core like this a lot of times they actually already have a slight curve to it. Now sometimes it's exaggerated enough you actually need to set it out for a night and put weights on it to flatten out. But it's okay if it has just a little bit of a curve. Just make sure if your big piece of foam core has a little bit of a V shape to it, make it so that that V shape is going to work with your plane. You, you don't want that curve to be upside down. Otherwise your plane is going to be unstable. For example, if you look at this plane that I've already built, if you look down the wing, you can actually see it's got a little bit of a V-shape to it. And that's what you want. If it comes out that it's perfectly flat, that's okay. But if it does have a tendency to be a little bit of a V-shape, go ahead and take use of that. Now here's a little tip when you're cutting your foam core out. Instead of putting your blade in vertically, trying to pull it backwards, you actually want to tilt it so the top of your knife is angled a little forward, or in the direction of your cut, like this. Doing that allows the blade to cut more efficiently, and it's going to make it a lot easier to do nice, straight, smooth cuts. So remember, don't try and cut vertically like this. Put your blade in and kind of lay it down. Like that. Now I went ahead and taped down the three major pieces of the plans, the wing, tail, and fuselage on the foam core. And if you take a look here, you can see that I left about a quarter inch on the bottom or the back and the front of the wing. Now it's really important that you do this, and I'll tell you why. The reason for leaving this gap on the front and the back of the wing is that when you cut it out, you're actually gonna angle your razor blade so that you're cutting an angle on the leading and trailing edge of the wing. So it's gonna look something like this when it's done. See how this plane has an angle on it? Now this point is illustrated a little bit better if you look at this drawing that I have here. Here's the wing. Got the top and the bottom of the wing and you can see that the leading and the trailing edge are cut at angles. Now the reason for this is to make the wing more aerodynamic and it also helps generate lift. And you can also see here that I've got a side view of a barbecue skewer and there's some tape going over it as well. That's also going to be on the wing. So all this is going to help the wing create lift because it's a longer path on the top than it is on the bottom of the wing.